Hey, what's up creators, Anthony here. And in this video, we are going to talk about teleprompters. So real quick, you probably already know this, but why do we use teleprompters? Well, it allows us to write out our entire script word for word, and then very easily deliver that script to the camera, to your audience, without ever rambling, without adding a ton of fluff, and really just delivering that content as fast as possible. So the teleprompter that we use and recommend in this program is the Glide Gear TMP100. It is super high quality. It is about $200, which is kind of expensive, but if you're creating a lot of content for YouTube courses, whatever it may be, you want something that you can rely on that's built really well, and I cannot recommend this higher than I already do. I've really come to love it over the past few years. Now, when you first get it, it will be flat like this. We'll talk about that in just a second, but first we have to scooch back and get this thing mounted onto our tripod. So right now I know it is a little bit out of frame, but we are using the Kyair BV30L tripod, another amazing tripod, super budget friendly as far as high quality and very reliable tripods go. It is in our kit.co, you can find that if you're curious. But how do we get this thing on? Well, all tripods come with essentially their own type of mounting plate. This is a relatively universal mounting plate. It works with this tripod, it works with my Manfrotto tripod. All you need is that screw in the middle that you're going to essentially just put onto the bottom of the teleprompter. This is an example of another tripod. This is the Peak Design Carbon Fiber Travel Tripod. I love this, it's super small and I trust it a bunch, but it has a different mount on it, which I will show you really quick. You can see it looks different, but it has that screw on the top, which allows me to screw it into the teleprompter prompter nonetheless. But for the sake of this training, we are going to use this plate that works with this tripod. You just want to make sure it's lined up properly and screw it into the proper screw thread. There are a ton on the bottom. You can really choose any so long as they fit. I have a little tool that I use to make sure that it's perfectly tight, nice and secure. And then from there, you can just slide it right onto your tripod. Tighten it so it's locked into place and now we are good. So from there, you're gonna see that there are these two locking pins on the front and the back, and when you undo those, you're able to slide the reflective glass forward, and then there are going to be these other screws that you have to quickly line up and screw in like I am right now. There's one in the front, one in the back. When you do this, now this sliding glass piece is kinda locked in place and it's not gonna move. From there, if I put this fabric down, you'll see that we have a mounting plate for our camera. Or essentially, it's not really a mounting plate, it's just a screw that we can put our camera on. So I'm going to be using the Canon EOS R. This is the camera that I created the 14 Day Filmmaker program using. It already has the screw thread on the bottom, so we don't actually need a plate for this. You just align that hole with the actual screw and you will be good to tighten it. It can be kind of a pain sometimes. But there we go. I actually haven't tightened it all the way yet because I want to take this fabric, put it under the camera while it's still just a little loose. And now we can actually push the camera forward. The reason we do this is because we want the camera as close to the front of the teleprompter as possible. This is gonna make sure that the teleprompter itself doesn't actually get in your shot. If you have your camera all the way back here and you're using a wide angle lens, it's actually gonna capture the corners of the teleprompter which doesn't look good. So you wanna make sure you slide that camera up about as far as it can go. And then from there, I typically just roll up this fabric a little bit so I can actually still hit the record buttons on my camera. And the last thing you wanna check is look at the actual camera from the front and make sure that that fabric hasn't kind of folded up underneath the lens, which gets in the front. Pain in the butt when you record a whole video and the fabric is in the way but we should be good now, and we have the camera completely set up. Couple notes we need to make about cameras though. I'm actually gonna grab the 1DX Mark II and this 24 to 70 lens, because first up, what you're probably gonna notice is larger cameras can sometimes fit on this differently than the shorter cameras like the EOS R would. Now, this teleprompter still works with the 1DX Mark II, but you have to be careful. It's not gonna work with all lenses because it has this kind of taller section at the bottom. If you're using a large camcorder or another just really big camera, you wanna make sure that it's actually gonna fit on this teleprompter. Anything that's about the same size as the EOS R is gonna work perfectly. The other note I wanna make is with the long lenses. So this is the 24 to 70 lens from Canon, and when you zoom it out all the way, it extends in length. So when you have that, it's not an issue, but you just wanna keep in mind, it can hit that glass and it's gonna cause your camera to be pushed back a little bit. Like I said, it's not an issue, but just something to keep in mind. So now that I have my phone, the first thing that I'm gonna do is go into the Google Docs app, which you can see I have here. 
I'm going to click on the most recent script that I wrote. I'm going to select all the text and just hit copy. From there, I'm going to go over to the Prompt Smart Pro app. Now, this is a $20 app that works on both iPhone and Android phones. It's the best teleprompter app that we've found. It tracks voices with us as we read, so it's really nice and useful. And I'm just going to hit the plus button in the top left hand corner and then hit on new script. I'm then going to title this Gear Paradox and then paste that entire script into the app. I'm then going to hit done. And if I refresh here, you'll see that the gear paradox is up at the top. So I'm going to click on that. And before we hit play, we're actually going to talk about the settings real quick. So I don't change many of the settings, but really quickly, the ones that you want to make sure you have set correctly are scroll text should be set to voice track. That way the actual phone's going to read with you or it's going to listen to you and scroll the actual script for you. We also want to have mirror vertically turned on. From there, if you keep going down, the only other setting we want to talk about is side margin position. So this essentially determines how big are the margins on each side of the text. We actually want the margins to be a little bit bigger so that the space that our eyes track back and forth from left to right is smaller. And we'll get into that when we actually load the phone on. But just know I typically use narrower or narrow west. Those are the two settings I use. If you click on those, you can see you have full screen, narrow, narrower or narrow west. It's kind of a tongue twister. But either way, covered that. And for the most part, you can go all the way down. You can test these as much as you want, but I leave all of these in the default position. So I'm going to hit back, hit play. And this actually loads up the teleprompter interface. Now I'm going to swing the camera around and show you how I actually line this up. So what you're going to want to do when you first load up your teleprompter is you're going to want to put your phone sideways like this. I'm going to make sure that's right. And you're going to want to do this and we're actually going to unscrew this right here so we can pull out this section and it's not in the way. The reason we don't want to do wide is because the distance between the left and right of the text that is super freaking long and the audience is going to be able to see your eyes tracking back and forth from left to right and it's going to make you look like a robot. So instead of doing the wide way, we actually flip the phone so it goes like this and then we put it in the vertical way which is going to make that distance between left and right super small. And you can actually see here the margin size has increased on both sides. That's the setting that we were talking about just a moment ago. If you had this set to full screen instead of narrower, which is what I have, the text would take up the entire screen from left to right. Either way, you can test around with these and see what works best. But what I like to do from here is just hit play, which is going to actually start it. And it's now tracking for our voice. And now I push it actually behind the teleprompter just a little bit because that's what I found looks best as far as where the actual text lines up. And then I push the phone a little off to the left just because I find my eyes naturally over here. And in order to counteract that, I make sure that the script is just a little bit off to the left. Now, when I actually read the script, it's going to scroll with me and you can see here. What is up creators? Anthony here. And let's talk about the gear paradox. This is one of the biggest time sucks, the easiest way to unnecessarily stress yourself out in a very slippery slope. So pretty dang cool. It reads the script with me. It makes my job way easier. I don't have to time my voice with anything. I just read it as I naturally would. And the app is actually going to do most of the work for me. So I'll take this out and get back in my seat here. And that covers just about everything you need to know about getting started with teleprompters. Now, a couple additional notes here before we end the video, you might be asking yourself, well, what if I want to build my course or shoot the content that I'm shooting with a cell phone? Is that still going to work? So let's take the EOS R out here and talk about how we do this with a cell phone because it's absolutely possible. Take the EOS R out. You're going to notice that your cell phone doesn't have a thread on the bottom. So we can't actually just screw this in. But what you can do is go onto Amazon and order a $10 tripod to cell phone adapter mount. And what that's going to do is actually screw in right here like your camera would. And then from there, you actually just mount your phone into that adapter. And then you can move it around just like you would with the camera. And it's going to work the same exact way. And it's going to look pretty good because most modern cell phones have pretty good cameras. The only other thing though is typically we read our scripts from our phone. We load the phone into the front. But when you're using your phone to record, you're not actually going to be able to do that. So from there, what I recommend you do is first 
take one of your family member's phone if they're in the actual house, whether that's your kids, your girlfriend, boyfriend, your husband, wife, whatever it may be. If you don't have anybody else in the house with you, you can get a cheap iPad, an old iPod Touch, and that's gonna do the job just fine. That way you have something dedicated for filming and something dedicated for actually holding the script. Now the last thing I wanna talk about is actually seeing yourself while you're recording. So one thing that I love about the EOS R and about a lot of modern cameras is they have this flip out LCD screen, which would normally allow you to see yourself while you're filming. But the issue with the teleprompter is even when you flip out that screen, the teleprompter is actually gonna get in the way and you're not gonna be able to see that flip out screen and see yourself while you're recording. It's not a big issue at all. I actually created all of the 14 Day Filmmaker content without ever seeing myself while I was recording. All I did was set up my scene, make sure my lighting and my composition was all good to go. I then sit down exactly like I would plan to during the video and I would just hit record and do a little test drill for 30 seconds where I read through my script. I then stop, go look at the footage while it was on my camera and it always would look good and I knew from there that I'd be able to just sit back down and record with confidence knowing that everything would look good. So although external monitors do help the things that you can just put on top of your camera and actually see what your camera is recording while you're recording it, you do not need one and if you don't want to spend a couple hundred bucks on it, you're totally fine. But that does it for this video. If you found the content helpful, if you don't mind subscribing and leaving a like beneath this video, it helps out a ton with the YouTube algorithm and on top of that, you should absolutely check out our online film program called 14 Day Filmmaker. It is the world's fastest and most affordable online course that teaches you everything you need to know about filmmaking to get started shooting amazing cinematic videos in just 14 days. It's hard to believe how fast the program has grown, but we have almost 20,000 students enrolled in the training and they absolutely love the content. The program contains over 100 videos in total. There are practice exercises every day. We have massive discounts on professional editing software like Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, and if you actually use that discount, it pays for the program in a matter of a month because it saves you something like $360 per year. We have an awesome Facebook group where people can ask questions, they can compete in the regular competitions that we hold. They can also just share their work and ask for feedback. And a lot of people say that Facebook group is worth the price of the program by itself. So if you are interested and you want to join the world's fastest growing online community of filmmakers, the link for that program is in the description beneath this video. And just so you know, the whole program, literally everything with the discounts, the free downloads, the community, all that stuff, it costs less than taking your grandma out to dinner just one time. So if you're interested, link in the description. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.